imagine you're Rick Riordan and you just put out a five book series that changed your life forever and you want to keep writing these stories in your new world that you just created but you also realize that no matter what you do people are going to compare the new characters that you would want to make to the characters from your first series like if you have a new trio there's no way that your audience isn't going to compare every single tiny little minuscule thing they do to percy and annabeth and grover what do you do you write a book series literally having one of the greek god basically try to turn them into walmart versions of your characters force the audience to read these characters misunderstanding the people that they absolutely love and adore for five books and be in abject pain <laughs> watching it happen this is about heroes of olympus <laughs> There's a million things that I love about the Percy Jackson series as a whole. And sit there and say that The Lost Hero is an absolutely fascinating book to read, while at the same time saying that I hate it. Why do I hate it? Because Percy is gone the entire book. Of course I hate it. <laughs> but it's absolutely fascinating to think about how Rick Riordan set up this series. The number one thing I can say about Heroes of Olympus books, right? as opposed to the original Percy Jackson book series. If you go into Heroes of Olympus expecting it to be like the original Percy Jackson novels, you're absolutely going to be disappointed. Yes, that's true. Like if you go into those books expecting it to be like five books over like a four or five year span where these character stories and arcs build up over time and then you get to a huge culmination at the end and everything pays off and you leave that story feeling good and wonderful thinking about the trio of best friends and all the other people that they introduce that are all like this big family. If you expect Heroes of Olympus to be like that, yeah, you're going to feel really disappointed. You're going to feel confused, lost, maybe a little bit mild, mildly traumatized. Um, but that is not Heroes of Olympus. It's a completely different thing. Heroes of Olympus takes place in such a short amount of time. Like the five books that happen take place over like just a couple months basically of these people's lives. The main trio of kids make so many mistakes. Like the amount of mistakes they make about like their life decisions. I could write an entire list out. I could do a bullet point. I could turn this video into a PowerPoint presentation about all the things that those kids did wrong. And they figure some of that stuff out. Some of it still needs to be figured out in the books afterwards. Like these are teenage traumatized kids. They're not gonna get everything right. But if you're expecting it to be the story or if you're expecting that because these things happen in these books, that this is what you're supposed to be rooting for, you're doing those books a disservice and Rick Riordan as an author a disservice. And you gotta look, you gotta look a little bit deeper. Hera quite literally makes a Walmart version of Percy, Annabeth, and Grover. Except that she is a, she's freaking Hera and she's a Greek god and she has no idea why these kids actually love each other so much and so she gets it all wrong the thing i think is most important about what Hera does to these kids is that it's a direct response to what happens in the first five percy jackson books if you don't think about it as like a through line then some of the motivations can be hard to understand think about what happened in the first five percy jackson books the gods were proven to be wrong they were proven to be bad parents they were, they offered Percy immortality and he told them no and instead made them claim their children like they're supposed to and shame them for being horrible, abusive parents. So now here's this new prophecy and Hera knows that they need the Roman camp and the Greek camp to get along. Now, did Hera need to steal Percy in the middle of the night when he was sleeping, put him into a magical coma, leave him in like a cabin in the middle of the woods surrounded by wolves where he would be basically in a coma for six months of his life where nobody would know where he was and everyone would be freaking out the entire time only for him to wake up with no memories and basically walk around homeless being attacked by monsters constantly only surviving because he has the river Styx curse 
or otherwise I don't know if he would have even made it to Camp Jupiter alive. Did she need to do that to him? Did she need to put him through that? Did she need to steal eight months of his life away from him and everyone else who loves him in order to force him to go on this quest? No. No, she didn't. She didn't need to do that. She could have just talked to him. She could have talked to him where he would have been able to tell people like Annabeth and Chiron and stuff at camp what he was doing. Because let's be real here. Percy absolutely would have gone undercover to the Roman camp without needing his memory to be wiped. He would have done that. Especially if it was like a life or death situation, which it is. He would have done it. People like the like all of the gods find... The people that they're trying to control, like asserting some sort of dominance or just having any sort of independence as like the most dangerous thing they can possibly ever imagine. <laughs> and so to someone like Hera, Percy giving like the rest of the demigods like a choice, like showing that you have a choice and if you want to do these quests or not, that you can talk back to like your parent, that they have to claim you and you don't have to be happy with them just because they happen to acknowledge your existence. She sees that all as this huge threat. And so to try to put Percy and Annabeth and by extension Grover too, even though he's not directly involved in this one, back in their, back in their place, like shove them down and make them feel horrible. She forces Percy to be involved in this in the most traumatic way possible. <laughs> go back to like the how the trio the lost hero trio is literally like walmart version of percy and annabeth and grover particularly piper and jason are absolutely supposed to be a copy of percy and annabeth because hera doesn't understand demigods hera doesn't none of the none of the greek gods actually understand their kids not really that's like the crux of the whole problem of course but she knows from watching Percy and Annabeth through the years, she can see that those two went on all of these quests, did all of these things that they otherwise probably wouldn't have done if it was just them on their own. To, in her mind, the only way for her to get them to agree to it is to shove memories into Piper and Leo's brain that makes them think that Piper and Jason are Percy and Annabeth. The first, one of the first things you ever hear from Piper's perspective in The Lost Hero is her saying that she spent all of this time trying to like have a relationship happen with Jason and she feels sad and devastated because Jason doesn't remember who she is and so all of all of the all of these memories they have together are now lost none of that actually happened though that is all like fake memories that Hera put in her brain. She literally took Percy and Annabeth's story. Everything with Piper and Leo and Jason's characterization is so thrown off for this entire book series. And then there's Leo, like, oh my god, I could do an entire video about Leo and I probably will at some point, but Leo has the most distorted view of Percy out of everyone on this trip. The most self-destructive thing that Leo does in this entire series, by far, is giving up literally his entire life to save Calypso and be with her in a relationship. The last thing that Leo needs is to literally kill himself for the betterment of another woman who doesn't know him, has no idea who he really is, and was treating him like garbage up until the point that she realized that he could get her off of her island finally and she would stop cursing Percy even though she only told him to build a garden and never told him to save her from this island, she told she told Leo that he did anyway. She freaking lied to him. It's because she's grooming him. If you look at Heroes of Olympus as a story where all of these seven kids are all best friends and they all get along and everything's wonderful and they go on this wonderful journey together and you're supposed to be like happy that Piper and Jason are still dating at the end and you're supposed to be happy that Leo literally blew himself up to save Calypso. And you're supposed to be happy that all of these other things happen. You're not. You're not supposed to be happy. You're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be happy. Everything is a mess. Everything is terrible. And you're just supposed to be trying to, like, hold on for dear life. <laughs>